The evolution of space rockets is a remarkable story of human ingenuity and technological advancement. From humble beginnings to the awe-inspiring achievements of modern space exploration, the development of space rockets has revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos and opened up new frontiers for human exploration. And now, in the race to land the first humans on Mars, NASA is betting big on nuclear rocket engines to get its astronauts to the Red Planet. Welcome to Science Nomad. In today's video, let us have a look at the experimental propulsion technology that goes back decades and has returned to the forefront of aerospace innovation, capturing the attention and imagination of scientists and engineers worldwide. Stick with us till the end as we unearth this groundbreaking development and its profound impact on the future of space exploration. The vision of first foot on Mars. Although some rovers like Curiosity and Perseverance have touched the surface of the Red Planet, the dark side of our moon stands as the sole destination beyond Earth where humans have been able to set foot. But a transformative vision is taking shape at NASA, aimed at altering the course of human exploration beyond the moon. At this point in the 21st century, it still takes a few days to get a heavy payload to our own moon and months to our neighboring planet. The fastest and most efficient method currently at our disposal involves employing the Hohmann transfer method. This calculated trajectory takes advantage of specific launch windows that occur approximately every 26 months. Even with this optimized route, however, the voyage to Mars remains a formidable undertaking, spanning an estimated duration of around nine months. But what if this travel time could be reduced to 45 days? Yes, you heard that right. Just about 45 days. NASA has disclosed plans to build a nuclear-powered rocket capable of carrying astronauts to Mars in a mere 45 days. As per the statement made by NASA at the end of January this year, they have teamed up with the Department of Defense's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, to develop a nuclear thermal rocket engine, which would dramatically improve the trip to our red neighbor. This project has been named the Demonstration Rocket for Agilsys Lunar Operations, or DRACO. The director of DARPA, Stephanie Tompkins mentioned that DARPA and NASA have a long history of fruitful collaboration in advancing technologies for their respective goals. From the Saturn V rocket that took humans to the moon for the first time to robotic servicing and refueling of satellites. History of nuclear thermal engines. NASA began investigating nuclear thermal engines way back in 1959 to tap into the nuclear potential. NASA launched a research program called SNAP, Systems for Nuclear Auxiliary Power, a program of experimental radioisotope thermoelectric generators, RDGS, and space nuclear reactors. This kick-started the development of radioisotope thermoelectric generators, which use plutonium-1238 and thermocouples to convert heat into electricity. These units have been on a number of famous missions like Curiosity, Cassini, Pioneer, and even Voyager 1, which is currently cruising on RDG power more than 23 billion kilometers away from us. The program also develops NAP-10A, a fission reactor that's considered the U.S.'s first and only known nuclear space reactor. It took off in 1965, failed after 43 days into the mission, and will be orbiting Earth for another 3,000 years. All subsequent nuclear space programs, like NERVA, which looked into nuclear-powered rockets, were shittered or just didn't get off the ground. NERVA Nuclear Engine for Rocket Vehicle Application A solid core nuclear reactor underwent successful testing on Earth. However, 
Plans to fire the engine to space were shelved after the Apollo era ended in 1973, and funding for the program was drastically reduced. When we start talking about putting men on the moon in 2024 or on Mars in the near future, we need a lot more power. That's where fission really kicks in. Let's first examine current technology to see where things could be improved. The Atlas V rocket that brought Perseverance to Mars utilized chemical combustion to propel itself, a method where a fuel and an oxidizer are combined in a combustion chamber and ignited. The resulting exothermic reaction causes the combustion products to rapidly heat up and expand. The nozzle design then directs this expanding gas in one direction to achieve thrust. The new rocket would harness the power of nuclear fission, in which a rapidly moving neutron crashes into an atom, splitting it into two smaller atoms and releasing large amounts of energy. Nuclear thermal propulsion technology provides high thrust and twice the propellant efficiency of chemical rockets. Conceptually, nuclear thermal engines are quite simple. They simply involve using a nuclear reactor to heat a propellant, such as hydrogen, to high temperatures, and then expelling the propellant through a nozzle. It is rather a bimodal nuclear propulsion, which is a two-part system that includes NEP nuclear electric propulsion with NTP nuclear thermal propulsion. NEP depends on a nuclear reactor to provide electricity to a Hall effect thruster ion engine which will generate an electromagnetic field that will ionize and accelerate an inert gas, for example, xenon, to create thrust. Advantages of this technology, aside from reducing travel time, such a rocket would allow for a larger payload as well as improved communications and instrumentation. Also, the longer the astronauts on board spend in transit, it would affect astronauts physically as they have to deal with microgravity, which leads to muscle and bone loss, cardiovascular changes, fluid shifts causing puffy faces and potential vision problems, and even space motion sickness. Another bonus for astronauts is that nuclear-powered rockets afford the crew chances to abort deep space mission on chemical engines once a spacecraft was headed to Mars, there would be no coming back until the planets lined up again. Are nuclear-powered rockets safe? In terms of safety, engineers say the nuclear systems would not be used at the launch pad at all. That is, in fact, one of the most common misconceptions about technology. Chemical rockets would lift the spacecraft off the ground in a hybrid approach. Once the vessel had reached a space altitude ranging from 400 to 1,300 milles, significantly surpassing the International Space Station, the nuclear-powered engines would take over. This is critical to ensuring that the material is no longer radioactive when it re-enters the Earth's atmosphere. So, thus this technology would be safe for both people on Earth and astronauts in space. However, we should be clear that we are still in the early days of development. The Artemis I mission with NASA's latest and most powerful Megamoon rocket was the first of three missions intended to test the hardware, software, and ground systems that would one day be used to establish a base on the moon and transport the first humans to Mars. This initial test flight will be followed by Artemis II and Artemis III in 2024 and 2025 to 2026, respectively. Artemis II will travel the same path as Artemis I, but with a four-person human crew, and Artemis III will send the first woman and first person of color to land on the moon's surface at the lunar south pole. And if these missions are successful, we would get a step closer to cherishing our long-held dream of humans walking on Mars. Thanks for watching Science Nomad. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. 
To stay updated on such topics, subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a video.